So we get a little international flair in this story here. We're taking a look at the historic landslide election victory for the Labour Party of New Zealand. And Jacinda Ardern's going to be in power once again. And she has done quite a good job of overreaching. And yeah, we need to highlight this because it's a warning. It is definitely a warning to everyone out there who thinks that safety is somehow a justification for authoritarian type measures. So, first things first, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern delivered the biggest election victory for her center-left <laughs> <laughs> Labour Party in half a century on Saturday, as voters rewarded her for her a decisive response to COVID-19. Decisive is one way to put it, Reuters. The mandate means Ardern, 40, could form the first single-party government in decades and will face the challenge of delivering on a progressive transformation she promised but failed to deliver in her first term. Aw, uh, no kidding, because it fucking sucked, and we'll get into that. We're a labor-shared party with a nationalist party. Well, those two things don't go together, but uh, you know what? If she was so center-left, and yeah, had to share, what, share power with I'm sure they're probably a white supremacist far-right party that was probably just, you know, a New Zealand first type party, but uh, feel free to correct me if you guys have any information on that. This is a historic shift. The political commentator Bryce Edwards of Victoria University in Wellington described in a vote as one of the biggest swings in New Zealand's electoral history in 80 years. Labour was on track to win 64 of the 120 seats in the country's unicameral parliament. I think I pronounced that right. The highest by any party since New Zealand adopted a proportional voted voting system in 1996. Arden, 40, promised supporters she would build an economy that works for everyone. As long as you're a tree hugger. Create jobs. As long as you are all for green energy. Train people. Because that's what we need. We need more government interference on what you're going to be doing with your life. Protect the environment. That is at least true. And address climate challenges. Well, I thought you were going to protect the environment. And therefore, that kind of makes things redundant. And social inequities. There we go. So half of those things are, well, actually way more than that. You take a look at yeah, an economy that works for everybody. That's not what she's looking for. Create jobs in the green sector. Social inequities. Climate change. She is governing from a place of moral superiority. Just like you have in Canada, guys. So if you're fellow Canadian out there, yeah, this is what you voted for in just a more distilled concentrate form. We are living in an increasingly polarized world, she said, and it only comes from your side, lady. A place where more and more have lost the ability to see one another's point of view, and I will call them bigots if they don't believe in mine. I hope that with that, this election, New Zealand has shown that this is not who we are, and I will tell you if we are not. Opposition National Party leader Judith Collins said she congratulated the Prime Minister for an outstanding result. Well, at least she's fair in the fact that she got absolutely curb stomp. Labour had 49% of the vote, far ahead of National at 27%. Yikes, the Electoral Commission said, with 95% of ballots counted. Yeah, uh, not quite as historical and not quite as big of a blowout as Britain had, but uh, right now they are definitely having a double take at what fucking conservative, the Conservative Party, I should say is uh, doing because have you seen the fucking coin that they just released diversity is britain i've got it pulled up here just because i yeah this is a 30 30 pence coin or 50 pence coin sorry that's going into circulation yeah that's from the conservative party by the way they have a massive 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 majority and they beat a party whose mantra was something like that except for jewish diversity that built Britain. They'd like to purge that from society. But that's uh, not important to this. We're going back to New Zealand. Arden said that she would wait until the final result to say if her government would include smaller groups like the Green Party, a former coalition party that secured a bigger 8% mandate, just like in Canada. Okay, our victorious party in the 2019 election, yuck, was the Liberal Party, which is, for all intents and purposes, known as the Labour Party around the the rest of the world and the conservatives because of the fact that they have a i ugh, have always had some kind of a limp wristed fucking leader since stephen harper stepped away from the party and there's just never a strong opposition at least here and 
yeah, polling and finishing at 27% uh, in New Zealand, I think we can draw the correlations here. But what has, they gave her a lot of credit for the COVID-19 response. And I think you guys might know this, but it was fairly intensive considering the fact that as of right now, they've had 1,888 cases. There's a few active right now, but did you know Jacinda Ardern helped New England, er, New England, New Zealand beat coronavirus? Up next, getting reelected. Oh, they beat coronavirus. That's amazing. On June 12th. And there's currently active cases. Oh, okay. I did a little dance said New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Ha, ha, ha. When asked how she reacted after learning that her country had essentially banished COVID-19, that's aged well, from the leafy shores on June 8th. She added that her young daughter, Nev, oh, somewhat confused, most of the population is as well, eventually joined her. It was a classic Ardern moment, slyly funny, a dollop of humanity with a large serving of gravity. Ardern's comment was also a soft mic drop, her, leader, her style of leadership, authoritarian, which emphasizes authenticity. Ugh. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to get into that. That is, uh, thanks time for being so genuine, so authentic in your coverage. The importance of trust, eroding it, and the priority of common good. Of course, appealing to the lowest common denominator. Whenever you see that in an article from a... Uh, it's so sad to see how far the Time magazine has fallen, but um, yeah. For the common good, that means for... Uh, think of the lowest common denominator individual out there. It doesn't matter who you can think of, but that's who they're saying is, oh, it's for the common good. That's who we're trying to appeal to. Do you want to kill grandma if you go outside? Because you could affect her and then she could die fucking yuck seems to have been well suited to the pandemic new zealand had only one yeah, 1154 confirmed cases for the new coronavirus model which led to 22 lost lives hey that's not too bad that's not too bad in fewer than 100 days however new zealanders will get a chance to go to the polls and yeah, it is also the right style of the nation's next cha next challenge overcoming the economic bludgeoning it has taken because she fucking shut everything down over yeah guess what 1100 cases overall at uh, the time of print in yeah, june 12th but guess what more cases popped up but of course because uh She's she's a woman and my pussy banished everything. New Zealand Prime Minister says we beat the virus again, but I thought you I thought New Zealand beat coronavirus. June twelfth, New Ze we beat the virus again, October fifth. Today's the eighteenth and there's active cases still. Oh, it's almost like they don't treat every leader equally. It's almost like there's a hierarchy of identity politics among the government and if you fall into a certain oppressed group then you get preferential treatment oh fuck man this is all hitting me in a wave right now i don't know if i can finish this video wellington new zealand prime minister jacinda arden declared on monday that new zealand beat the virus again and announced restrictions in the country's largest city would be eased after a second wave was contained and it wasn't and it wasn't because here we go Instead of just referencing it, I will show you. There are currently 67 active cases. It is the 18th of October, guys. 25 deaths, and she shut down the entire country for an extended period of time. I hate to use Wikipedia as a source, but they have a very good breakdown, and it's all cited. So, we can take a look at what they did. Instead of just saying she locked everything down, I'll give you the receipts. So the first case of the disease in New Zealand was reported on February 28th, 2020. Very important to remember that. And the pandemic peaked in early April with 89 new cases and 929 active cases, which led to a four-level alert system, which was introduced on March 21st. So a month, nearly a month after, three weeks afterwards. To manage the outbreak within New Zealand, the alert level was initially set at 2, but was subsequently raised to 3 on the afternoon of, yeah, two days later, the 23rd of March. Beginning on 25th, the alert level was moved to 4, putting the country into a nationwide lockdown. Because the first case came in a month before, they immediately hopped up to level 4. It was moved back down to level 3 a month later on the 27th of April. 
while keeping in my physical distancing and gathering size limits <laughs> mandates, which I fear are going to be going through until, I don't know, I'm fucking old and gray. And then on June 8th, four days before that first puff piece from time was pressed, yeah, they moved down to level one because uh, they beat the virus. Yep. New Zealand stronger than China confirmed. On August 11th, four cases of COVID-19 from an unknown source were reported in Auckland, but uh, travel travel uh, restrictions were in place. Uh, Arden was ruling with a uh, iron fist. I, I, I don't know what the fuck happened. At noon the following day, the Auckland region moved up to alert level three because a four new cases showed up, so she immediately shot that fucker right through the roof. While the rest of the country was moved to level two because four cases in Auckland means that the rest of the country that is bifurcated in two island states is, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. A great response, a great response. And now, of course, everybody's just going to have to live in fear because we all know that it's going to be... I fucking... I have no proof of this. This is just my opinion, so please take that this with a grain of salt because I don't have the receipts on it. As uh, uh, soon as things get colder. We've had a couple of days of, you know, light snow up here, but... um. I'm thinking right around, oh, election time seems about like a nice time. So right around November 3rd, we're going to start seeing uh, a spike of cases. People continue to not die at a rate that is uh, unfamiliar to the covid Tarians out there. And we're going to be heading back down to, well, level 3 or level 4 out of an abundance of caution. I have nothing to back that up. That's just my theory because I think that this pandemic has been such an effective way for authoritarians to flex their authoritarianism that uh, they aren't ready to give this up. Because you see how fucking vociferous Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan, governor of Michigan, I reference her often because she is just the cutest little despot out there. And she just does not want to give up her her powers she wants those powers indefinitely regardless of what her attorney general has said and has ruled unconstitutional but uh, yeah this COVID-19 over response that Jacinda Arden had wasn't the first time and if you guys remember there was a rather horrific shooting that happened in New Zealand and we're gonna bring that up so once again we got to go back to yeah the wonderful pages of Time magazine and you see this Ugh, disgusting oil painting. I just want to go through these. This has nothing to do with the actual story. Okay, we got, yeah, peep, uh, Leaders Who Shaped 2019 is the name of this article. And we've got, yeah, Prime Minister Modi. And then, of course, leader, leader of a country, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, right? Speaker of the House, uh, there's a U.S. President, right? Well, at least he got his own oil painting. And that is not what his hair has ever looked like, but, um, yeah, whatever. Nice looking painting. Oh, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. I just wanted to share that with you guys if you don't click on the <laughs> links in the description. But uh, they're especially terrible. Especially this one. She reminds me of the evil mother from Tangled. A weird reference, I know. But uh, yeah, like if you hear in about 10 or 15 years time that she has her daughter trapped in a big tower, don't be terribly surprised. And remember to cite your boy Don Consuelo for uh, letting you know that this bitch is fucking nuts. The gesture was simple, but the effect was profound. Less than 24 hours after a far-right extremist massacred 50 worshippers in the two Christ Church, tra Christ Church mosques in March, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern put on a black hijab. You signaling bitch, you couldn't just done that in a fucking pantsuit? To meet members of the Muslim community, which make up 1% of the New Zealand population, hear their fears and share in their grief. In one for... In one photograph of the encounter, the young leader's brow is lightly creased and her mouth turned down. It, doesn't this sound like fucking propaganda? Oh my god, unbelievable, unbelievable. The obscenity of the slaughters has been compounded by beginning by being live-streamed. But here was a still of that frame as it spread beyond the heartbroken island nation. Would endure as an emblem of compassion, tolerance and resolve. Arden took power in August, in October 2017 at the age of 37. It was the world's youngest female leader. Stunning and brave. Stunning and brave. She advanced a range of progressive policies, all of which suck a fat dick. 
with a particular focus on the environment under arden new zealand's government banned single-use plastic plastic bags planted 140 million new trees and passed a bill to set a net zero target for carbon monoxide emissions by 2050 doesn't that sound a lot like what joe biden's trying to do doesn't that sound like a lot of what uh, justin trudeau's fucking backwards retarded logic is yeah exactly he's uh, passed a bunch of that shit there and by the way planting trees um we've been doing that for whenever at least in my area i've known this fairly well whenever places like warehouser can for old Ains, ainsworth mill um now known as norboard whatever the fuck that means whenever they'd go in and cut down trees and you know, create their wood products that way they would always place two trees in replacement so i understand that doesn't immediately replace the trees that are being cut down but um yeah they're doing their due diligence and yeah replacing and improving the forests but um ragging on disinformation campaigns from certain environmentalist groups when it comes to the oil field to the forestry industry yeah that's going to be a topic for another video and if you guys want to hear that sooner rather than later just let me know because uh there is a huge disinformation campaign and having boots on the ground myself i know what happens in the aftermath of the oil field and uh, the forestry industry and it's not at all what you're being told she also extended paid parental leave and took six weeks off herself after giving birth while in office a rare example of a head of state taking parental leave of any length well congratulations to her for having a child and you know doing the right thing of you know spending some and i use some very strongly time with her newborn but um that is very much a oh i have a problem here so i'm just gonna legislate it and i'm just gonna make the taxpayers pay for uh more parental leave of any length yeah mm -hmm. just yeah once again oh yeah uh taking care of the needs of everyone but uh i i'll all benefit from this first and um no, give me credit it was only six weeks right yeah because that's what we want from our leaders to just you know take off time and have their thoughts placed elsewhere yet it was the response to a tragedy that arden emerged as an icon the purpose of terrorism is to scare and divide and you know what the manifesto of this fucking batshit motherfucker was he wanted to do this massacre in order to create division and incite the media and that's exactly what it did and that's exactly what this bitch did so uh fucking nutcase's uh, job was you know he was successful in the fucking lunacy that he was trying to push forth and so the prime minister reassured and united she immediately made herself available to fellow citizens particularly those who felt most vulnerable she kept attention focused on the affected and refused to utter the killer's name which is great voldemort type strap tactics and she challenged the grief and rage of her country into meaningful change pushing through reforms on gun laws only days after the attack which is not what you do you do not legislate based on emotion you name who the fuck you want to attack or who deserves to be attacked you remember how many times barack obama said uh isis or islamic extremism zero we take for granted the fact that donald trump will actually name the enemies and the wrongdoers of the american public something justin trudeau doesn't like to do because he wants to be everybody's prime minister and when you don't take a side on something you end up pissing everybody off there's no moral value in sitting in the middle on something and that's what these limp-wristed fucking leaders tend to do who get all this praise from the media oh you know we have to assess both sides yes assess both sides and then take a fucking firm stance on something yeah you're gonna piss off one side but you're also gonna ingratiate yourself to the other side and uh take your lumps with it that's what i do around here and that's what uh i know my audience does as well but what the fuck okay pushing through gun reforms well guess what your boys got the receipts assault rifles to be banned in new zealand in aftermath of a massacre which is definitely what you should be doing when somebody comes in and shoots everybody with a gun that he did not purchase himself something that he illegally obtained which um there were laws in the books for this and um so what you're gonna do you're going to punish legal gun owners so guys like sammy the bull have given interviews saying yep gun control yep is not effective on criminals because criminals are still going to get a gun i'm still going to get a gun according to yeah, sammy the bull gravano a man who has successfully killed several 
people, by the way. All military-style semi-automatic weapons, assault rifles, and high-capacity magazines will be banned in New Zealand following a mass shootings at two Christchurch mosques that killed 50 people, New, Ze New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced on Thursday. Within a week, she stripped the rights of her public based on the horrific massacre of 50 people, which I don't want to diminish in any way. Definitely a terrible tragedy, but uh, how many more people are going to be killed because this uh, mandatory buyback program was instituted? I don't have the statistics pulled up right away, but um, I can tell you that violent crime continues to go up in places like the UK and Australia, where they have, yeah, they don't have any guns there either, because crazy people are still going to do crazy shit regardless of their methods. Improvised explosives, the truck of peace which we uh, haven't heard from in a while, which um, I'm sure I'll take out another uh, lovely German Christmas village here, like it has in the past few holiday seasons. But no, fucking Prime Minister Arden is nothing more than an authoritarian. Somebody who just likes to take advantage of a situation, who likes to indulge in power. And if she'd have it her way, she would turn the free market aspects of New Zealand into a figment of your imagination. Now, of course, I'm not being hyperbolic on this. These are her words herself. New Zealand's new prime minister calls capitalism a blatant failure. If you have hundreds of thousands of children living in homes without enough to survive, that's a blatant failure. Failure. What else could you describe it as? New Zealand's new prime minister called capitalism a blatant failure, citing levels of homelessness and low wages as evidence that the market has failed. Her country's poor. Jacinda Ardern, who became the nation's youngest leader since 1856, said measures used to gauge economic success have changed. No, they've only changed because you want to change the narrative. To take into account people's ability to actually have a meaningful life. How the fuck do you gauge that? How do you gauge that? Do you gauge that on uh, people's happiness, which is a fleeting, fuzzy fucking metric out there, which uh, happiness just comes and goes, it flows. There are many more meaningful ways to gauge uh, a meaningful life, but it has nothing to do with shifting the goalposts. The more a researcher, the more I just don't like and could never support a center-left prime minister like Jacinda Ardern. She is a blatant authoritarian, like I've showed here. Somebody who wants rules for me, or rules for thee, and not for me. She just wants to take advantage of a tragedy in order to make herself look good. And to wrap it back up, this is what Canada has to deal with for another three years, and this is what America can look forward to. These type of ruling practices, these types of green first initiatives under a Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, okay, let's just drop the pretense, under a Harris administration, as said by Kamala Harris about a week and a half ago. So look to examples around the world if you want proof positive that uh, there is very little good to be found on the left. There's a lot of name calling. There's a lot of straw manisms out there. I've given you the receipts here. Uh, hopefully I've done a good job of laying out the fact that uh, Arden's not so center left as she likes to be portrayed in the media. I've used the Independent, Reuters, Time, CTV News for... It's a, you know, if you're not from Canada, it's on the same level as like prestige level, not uh, propaganda level like CNN, MSNBC. It's on that same same top tier of media journalism. Yuck. Now just heaping praise on this um, less than stellar individual. And I'll leave it at that and let you guys decide with the facts that I've presented. And if you'd like to do more research, by all means, it'll be in the description down below. But I know I've come to a conclusion and uh, yuck. Thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.